Hi friends, see the interrupts programming. In before session, we discussed about the interrupts from microcontroller and uh, what are the what what we the, your microcontroller have divided into hardware interrupts and software interrupts. So coming to this SFR registers related to interrupts. See, without knowing these SFR registers, it is not possible to program your interrupts from microcontroller. Okay, so every feature from microcontroller, irrespective of 8 bit, 16 bit, 32 bit. So you need to learn about the related SFR registers from controllers. Okay, so this SFR registers bits which are going to enable or disable your interrupts and uh, they can stop their functionality. These are all depends on your SFR registers programming. Okay, so coming to the first SFR register from interrupts block which is IE. IE, the name itself interrupt enable or disable register. Okay, so interrupt IE interrupts enable or disable register which have three eight pins again so out of eight individual bits all bits default logic is zero and for the first bit ea which means enable all or disable all the interrupts so the logic of this ea bit decides whether you are trying to enable all interrupts or disable all interrupts so based on the logic which is going to decide for logic 0 which disables all the interrupts and logic 1 it enables all the interrupts okay so this is the first bit from IE register and here EA is MSB and EX0 is LSB and EA bit description is very clear for logic 0 it disables all the interrupts for logic 1 it enables all the interrupts now the two unused bits so which means you can assign don't care logic either 0 or 1 so that is no issue and the fourth third bit is yes so this is enable serial interrupt or disable your serial interrupt see the first ea bit is already used for enable or disable all the interrupts but again you have individual control on interrupts so as per as previous session discussion you have categorized into six interrupts out of six five are programmable int0 int1 timer0 timer1 and serial okay so whenever you are looking to enable or disable serial interrupt individually you need to make it es0 irrespective of this ea logic even though your ea is enabled but if es bit logic is zero your serial interrupt is going to disable which means if you are looking to use any interrupt from microcontroller your ea should be one and then their individual bit should be one okay so again the same zero for disable and one for enable so logic one it makes your serial interrupt enable and logic zero it makes serial interrupt disable okay then what about et1 bit from ie register so this ET1, the name itself, you can easily just notice this timer 1 interrupt enable or disable. So this timer 1 interrupt which enable or disable bit which helps to enable or disable your inter timer interrupt 1. Okay, again for logic 0 disable, logic 1 enable. Okay, so finally your EA register is helping us, IE register is helping us enable or disable interrupts from the microcontroller. Okay, and what about EX1? So this EX1 means external interrupt 1. So what is your external interrupt 1 from microcontroller? Which is INT1. So this bit which is helping us to enable or disable external interrupt 1 from the microcontroller. So this is 0 disable and 1 enable. And the same thing for timer 0 and external interrupt 0. So ET0, this is for timer 0 interrupt. So this is finally using or helping us to disable or enable this five programmable interrupts from the microcontroller okay so ea bit for enable all the interrupts or disable all the interrupts and again two unused bits here 
and ES bit which is helping us to disable or enable serial interrupt and ET1 which is helping us timer 1 interrupt enable or disable bit and EX1 this is external interrupt 1 enable or disable bit and ET0 so this is timer 0 interrupt enable or disable bit and EX0 external interrupt 0 so which means INT0 okay so logic 1 makes enable logic 0 makes disable okay but the interrupt uh, importance is very clear from microcontroller whenever interrupt is given to microcontroller it stops main program execution and allows to execute ISR which is high priority task from the application but out of five interrupts suppose you are generating all interrupts at a time so that is a uh, one challenge for microcontroller again it will look for priority so the interrupt itself which is given for high priority task but again you have five interrupts in a microcontroller if you are generating all interrupts at a time then again there is a priority order for interrupts so that is maintained by IP register from the microcontroller interrupt priority register so this interrupt priority register which is helping us to change the priorities of interrupts other than default order but out of five programmable interrupts the priority order is very clear so priority order the first priority goes to INT0 and the next priority goes timer 0 interrupt next INT1 interrupt and timer 1 interrupt finally serial interrupt so this is the priority order of five programmable interrupts from microcontroller the first priority goes to INT0 out of five programmable interrupts next priority goes to timer 0 next priority goes to timer interrupt 1 next priority goes to timer 1 and final priority goes to serial TI or RI but as a programmer you want to change these priorities so whatever the default order which is following now if you want to change the priority then you need to program IP register from microcontroller so IP name itself interrupt priority register this is helping us to change the default order of priorities so coming to the bits of IP again this is a 8 bit register and out of 8 3 bits are unused and bit names are very clear it, it starts with PS which means priority of serial interrupt next PT1 PX1 PT0 PX0 and just you are replacing E with P here this is for enable or disable and IP register is have bits PS PT1 PX1 PT0 PX0 so default status of all these bits are logic zeros no change from the default logic and as a programmer you are looking to change the priorities then what this is my default order you are looking to give the highest priority for timer one interrupt as a one first interrupt in the microcontroller then you should make sure pt1 bit logic is one so whenever pt1 bit logic is one from programming then microcontroller have change in this order so now in this case what is the order of priority the first priority goes to timer one and next it will check for the default order which one comes first int0 timer0 int1 and tiri so this is the priority order for pt1 bit equals to 1 suppose you are making ps and pt1 both are ones in this case the order goes to now in this case ps equals to 1 pt1 equals to 1 in this case the priority order is very clear again in between timer 1 and serial so which one have first priority then timer 1 so timer 1 and tiri and int0 and timer 0 int1 so this is the priority for ps equals to 1 and pt1 equals to 1 suppose you made all bits once then no change in the priority 
if all are zeros and all are ones no change from the priority and you are making one specific bit from IP register is one then the priority is going to change from the five programmable interrupts so this is the importance of IP register and the third register which is TCON so TCON register which is helping us but the name TCON stands for timer control but from TCON register you should understand the four bits from TCON register you need to know which are LSB part of TCON register and you already discussed about the four MSB bits from TCON register TF1, TR1, TF0, TR0. So these already discussed in the timers part. Now we are talking about the four LSB bits of TCON register. These four LSB bits from TCON register which are helping us for interrupts handling like IE1, IT1, IE0, IT0. So these four bits which are truly works on two hardware interrupts of microcontroller. The first two bits for INT1 and next two bits for INT0. So in hardware interrupts, so what you know whenever I am giving external pulse to the microcontroller, it stops the main program execution and divert it to execute ISR which is interrupt service routing. So now in the case of hardware interrupts, so you need to know a few points whenever I am giving one high to low pulse, the microcontroller stops main program and which is treated as an interrupt and diverted for ISR and after completion of ISR it returns to main program. But one thing you need to remember here whenever you are making high to low, the controller stopping main program and diverted for ISR before written from ISR to main program what logic it is containing still whether it is holding zero or it, it is changed state so that you need to check if interrupt is still zero then you have two priorities here or you have two conditions either you are re-executing ISR um, and come back to main program that is you can decide by using edge triggering or level triggering from the microcontroller okay so suppose you are looking to execute your interrupt service routine re-execution based on the state of interrupt if it is still holding logic 0 then you are trying to re-execute ISR or come back to main program that will be decided by edge triggering or level triggering mode of external interrupts and who decides this whether you are working on edge triggering or level triggering here that will be decided by interrupt type bit from TCON register. So you are trying to decide whether you are looking to deal with these interrupts in level triggering mode or edge triggering mode. So you need to focus on TCON register bits IT0 and IT1 for external interrupts exclusively. Okay. So these two external interrupts which are present in your controller INT1 and INT0 and trying to use INT0 in level triggering mode make sure IT0 bit logic is 0 and what is level triggering mode here if it is still logic 0 then re-execute ISR suppose you are making IT1 bit is 1 then you are just choosing your external interrupt your external interrupt 0 in level triggering edge triggering mode so what edge triggering mode allows for one high to low pulse your controller stops main program and allows to execute ISR irrespective of this logic whether it is 0 or 1 it won't take care and come back to main program as usual okay so that is edge triggering mode so these two you need to remember whenever you are dealing with this hardware interrupts two hardware interrupts from the microcontroller so here IT0 and IT1 dedicated for deciding two external interrupts either you are trying to use in edge triggering mode or level triggering mode and whenever ISR execution is going on then if you are if your external interrupt 0 related ISR is execution is going on 
your IE zero bit automatically becomes one. And whenever it is completed, this will become zero. So that is, it notices that your ISR is running or ISR is completed. So these four bits, one bit deciding for type of interrupt, type of external interrupt, whether it is edge triggering mode or level triggering mode. And edge triggering, level triggering mode difference is very clear. If you are making zero, then for one high to low pulse, you are trying to enter into ISR. But before returning from ISR to main program, it will check the status of this logic, whether it is still holding zero or it is changing its logic. Or just don't take care of this logic and come back to main program. So this is your simple interrupt service routine or ISRs related SFR registers and their programming. Thanks. Thanks for watching.